What's up, everybody? Hopefully you can see and hear everything good. But uh, look at this thing. Let me just look at it. it. It's a little mini helmet. Beautiful. Anyways, we're going to get right to it. I'm going to show you how uh, my plan is on this. Um, we're going to lay out some flames with some 16th inch tape. Uh, we'll kind of play it by ear and see what we think. Um, I am going to outline it in the black. Maybe do a little bit of candy blue. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, and we might even do some flake in the flames. So we're gonna kind of leave it open and see what you guys wanna what you guys wanna do. But we're gonna start. This is this is what it started with right here. I don't know the size, but look how nice this thing is. I mean, come on. Look at that. So it comes like that. I uh, scotch brighted it down or actually hit it with the uh, 600 grit pad through the lime line right over it so that's straight up the black that's the lime line silver straight over three to four coats and then I put another two coats of clear over this I did run it a little bit see that ran it a little bit right there but no big deal I'll just black that area out so like if you ever have any problems where you like make maybe make a little run plan on putting black right there or you can always put lace or it's not the end of the world, or you can just sand it down, put more flake down and cover it if you end up like sagging or, or running that flake. That's how it starts. There it is. Metal flakes. Uh, so let's go from there. So I'm going to wet sand it. We only need a little bit of water with a little jug because this is just a little helmet. So just that. And we got a 600 grit sanding sponge, limelight sanding sponge and get it a little wet. The nice thing about this, rather than using Scotch-Brite, is this actually sands it smooth. Like Scotch-Brite, what it's gonna do is it's only going to uh, like scuff it. You know, it puts scratches into it for the paint to stick, which is fine. But if you have texture like we have here, because we have the flake on there, man, that caused like a lot of texture. It's not completely smooth. That's why we put a couple of coats of regular clear coat over the top of the flake that way we're not sanding all crazy into the flake, you know? So this is better than Scotch-Brite for this, what we're doing here, because we're sanding it smooth rather than just putting the scratches in there. It's going to help the tape to adhere better. And we're going to need that because look how small this thing is. I mean, we're going to run 16 inch tape on that. Try to do some flames. I don't know. I've never really taped out much anything of a any kind of hard curves like this has right here we'll see how it goes i might have a few mistakes but i'll show you how to fix them but yeah basically just knocking this down hopefully everybody can hear us we got any comments on there Making sure we get it all, get it all smooth and get it all knocked down. Oh yeah, Rob Vanderslice is on. <laughs> Okay, I think I just about got it here. A little bit more right here on the top of the crown. So someone said, hey, Adam, I just got the Limeline paint gun. What are your suggested settings for it? Well, it all kind of, it depends on what you're spraying. Um, I would, uh, I usually like to spray it around 20 pounds or so. Uh, but if you're spraying base coat, like it, you know, it's like, Telling somebody PSI, like it's, I would start around 28, 20 to 28. I wouldn't go any, anything over that. But once again, going back to the, the PSI, it all kind of depends on how thin your paint is, what you're painting, 
um, and what you're trying to accomplish. You know, it all you're always kind of just fiddling with that pressure and the fan pattern and, and what you're wanting to do. But um, generally, I like to spray it as as low as I can, you know, without making you know overspraying too much with it still atomizing good enough, you know, because like clear coat, you need it to atomize a little better. So like towards your last coats of clear coat, you're probably going to want to turn the pressure up a little bit so you can get that to atomize a little bit better because it's your last coat, maybe even thin it down a little more because uh, the PSI, it has a, when you talk PSI, you also talk about how thin and how reduced your paint is, but they kind of go hand in hand. If you have really thin paint, well, if you have really thin paint and, and a lot of pressure, it's going to come out fast. You have really thick paint, it's really high pressure, it's not going to come out as fast. So if it's thicker, you need more PSI, thinner, sometimes you need less. So if you want to say like you want to spray with less PSI, less pressure, then you want to thin out your paint more. So hopefully that helps. It all kind of depends. Start around 20 pounds, 28 pounds max, maybe a little more. Um, mostly it's just testing to see what it looks like. It's probably that was a really long-winded answer, but okay, we got, got it. Someone wants to know how much that helmet costs. Fifty bucks on Amazon. Fifty bucks on Amazon. Uh, third or no, uh, forty bucks on uh, the Big Cartel website, Limeline, the Limeline Big Cartel website. But you're gonna get them really quick. If you buy them on Amazon, because they're FBA and ready to go, probably one to two days. Okay, I just hit that with some glass cleaner. Now I'm kind of looking over. I can see there's still a little bit of texture there. I mean, you can have a little bit. It just needs to be mostly. Like, see right here. You could have a problem with some adhesion there. If this was like a customer's part, I would definitely. Like get the sandpaper up in there, and you gotta hit it like right on the corner. You gotta have no gloss. If it's a if it's a paying customer, it has to be no gloss, because you you don't want that coming off later. This is just a little mini helmet. It's just gonna sit on a desk, or it's gonna sit on a cat, right? I think that's the only thing it'll fit is on a cat. The person, the person that asked how much uh, for the helmet, he said no. He meant when it's painted by you. Oh, sure. I don't sell them like that. Actually, we should give it away though. One of these times. Just give this stuff, give it away. That's no big deal. Next one. Next one or this one? Next one. Okay. The next one of these that we do, we'll give it away. To somebody in the United States or in Canada. Canada's okay too. All right, that's going to be good enough. But like I said, if this is a customer's bike, you want to get up in there. You don't want to have any problems with their stuff. The pills a little bit on this. You know, what are you going to care? But like I said, you need something for the paint to adhere to. It's not going to stick to gloss clear coat. You know, you can see it's still textured. We're going to be okay. It's going to be a little bit more of a challenge for that tape to stick, but... We'll be able to do it. We'll make some mistakes, but we'll fix them. Let's give it a rub. <laughs> okay, cleaned up. A little bit more glass cleaner. That'll get rid of your sanding residue. If you have greasy hands, don't touch it. Like we were gonna, we're getting pizza, but we're gonna eat after because we don't want no fish eyes or anything in this thing. My hands are pretty clean right now. Okay, we got the sanding residue off. We're gonna grab. Did we start that live on that? Sixteenth okay. inch lime line tape, and then we're gonna want to get our razor blade ready. So if somebody buys this, they're gonna be the first ones that ever bought this particular. Razor plate. I haven't sold any yet. <laughs> They've been for sale for like a week and I haven't done any marketing. Look at this thing. Look how beautiful it is. You could be the first one to own one of, I don't know how many of these I have. 
but buy them up they're good they come with the replacement ba- blades 10 extra and it's only like nine dollars or ten dollars free shipping like i don't mean to turn this into a qvc thing but i haven't sold any of these so please buy one nine, nine bucks to get refills comes with it same one i use black you lose it real quick and you have to buy another one i guess but no i tried to get them in green didn't work out babe someone wants to know why you why do you use glass cleaner uh just to take care of the sanding residue that's it just to to clean it off i find that that's that's all you really need if you're if you're prepping it for the first time like from the the helmet when you get it you don't know who touched that helmet so you're going to need to use some wax and grease remover even before you sand it you should use wax and grease remover that way you're not driving all that stuff into the existing paint but those are just the little things not necessary but just you need to wax and grease it before you paint it and then after that as long as you're not eating chicken wings or something like that glass cleaner is good for the uh pretty much the rest of the way so i'm just lining this out right now maybe i'll just stop that right there i don't even know what i'm doing We're just usually I start with the edging and I put I start with the the contour the part so I'll just start right there. Somebody asked, "Is the blade on Amazon?" Because I don't see it. Yeah, that's probably part of the problem because I really haven't. Uh, huh, it will be after this. It will be after this. I, maybe they maybe ask why they're not selling just because I don't have them where they need to be. Oh yeah. Yeah, right on. Okay, so we're gonna do flames. I got that kind of bordered out. Not necessary, but I'm gonna do uh, flames. So what I like to do, and this is gonna be a little tougher because look how tiny this thing is. I mean, look at my hand compared to that. I gotta lay a flame on there. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the middle, but maybe a little off. Yeah, because I kind of want it. I'm gonna start way way back here someone wants to know how many sheets are in the gold leaf there's a hundred sheets in there so with flames if you've seen some of my other videos i kind of show how to do this oh that looks good that was a little bigger than i imagined wanted to maybe tighten that that loop up a little bit we'll see what it looks like but so i like to start with the u like the horseshoe kind of just you could you could bring him even out even farther but i don't know I just kind of follow the shape they don't have to be the same so start with the the middle crab claw kind of what they look like and so keep in mind what i'm doing here is i'm looking at the negative space so i'm creating the flame on the inside of the tape lines so i'm not really con i don't really care about what's over that you know this is all going to get trimmed i'm just worried about the inside i'm looking at the negative space so if you can see so i'm pulling this one next to that and i'm following it around fattening it up fattening it i don't know i can't say that fattening it up fattening yeah. I can say it that way when you say it I'm not going to try again but I'm going to make it bigger and then you know get it all plump right there and then just bring it right down into that so I probably could have came a little closer right there but so I started with the U and then kind of followed the same shape as that made it fat coming around we're going to go ahead let me pull that back a little bit because I want to make that. This is really getting really big. Like I'm not going to get very many flames on here making them that big. Go down in. Bring it around. And we're going to make a half of one. We'll make that tail really long right there. Let's cover up some space there. Okay, see what I did there? So we got the middle U, step one. Step two, follow what you got. Start with the peak. So we're not caring about here. We're caring about here. You can see it's a little wonky right there. It's okay. It's still going to look good. 
gets a little fatter, comes around, makes a shape similar to this. Yeah, it's a little, that's okay. It looks good. Doesn't need to be perfect. Bring that up and around there. And then we just cut it off there because once again, we don't care about the outside. We're only looking at the inside. So we'll take the tape again. So we're meeting it up with that and we're making that a point right there. I'm gonna have to sit down. Let's, let's see. So somebody's asking um, if it'd be better to use silver base instead of black in case you sand through the flake. And then someone also says the light's kind of making it hard to see. Yeah, I should probably turn that light down a little bit. Uh, I'll try to fix the lighting a little bit on the next one. I got it better than the last one, though. Um, what was the first one? The first question? Didn't get you on that. Um, oh, the silver. It's better to do silver base instead of black. They sand through the flake. Okay. Um, if you're sanding into the flake, you're probably going to sand into your base coat anyways. And like, it's not that much of a layer. Um, and the thing is, is with when you're putting flake over silver base coat, in my opinion, it's not quite as, doesn't have as much of a sparkle to it. This, the fact that this is painted over black, it's straight, this is straight up painted right over the black uh, coating that was on there. Um, I feel like it has more of a sparkle. You know, it doesn't mute out the, Something about it. I don't even know how to explain it. There's something about it that makes it a little better. But you can still do it the other way. It's it's all good. Um, but I, I don't think that's going to help sand and through, though, to be honest. I think if you're going to sand through your flake, you're probably going to slam through your base coat because it's so thin. And then someone asked how they can avoid the tape wrinkling when you're doing it on the inside of the tight curve. Just don't pull your tape. Let me show you something real quick, and we'll just kind of break away. If you were to practice something, you were brand new, I would say do this. So I have this just hooked to the end of the table. I'm feeling the tension. The, 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 the tape is like a spring. But once you pull it so far, it's going to end up uh, deforming it. It's going to make it thinner, especially the, the thinner the tape, the easier it is to pull and to, to change the shape of it. You don't want to do that. But what you do want to do is you want to know how you want to know the tension that you can pull on it and you want to pull just enough so if you look right here no tension if you look right here there's a lot of tension there's so much tension that i'm actually stretching the tape right now you know but once you stretch it like that it doesn't it's not going to act the same it's not going to it's going to have a hard time holding around the corners so what you need to do is just know your tension you know each tape's going to have a different tension to it try to lay it down with the least amount of like right now i'm i'm like this is barely hanging barely hanging but i'm not pulling see how i'm pulling right here that's going to cause tension and it's going to cause it to wrinkle and do something like that but yeah so i broke away for a second get the tape feel the tension uh get get used to it really and that, that'll kind of help you out Everything okay? All right, so I have, so we got number one right here. We'll go back, kind of recap what we got. We got the inside loop. We have the uh, number two, which is following that again, following something similar to that. And then on this one, I just barely did. Maybe I explained that a little bit better. Is once again, I'm just following the same, same, sh ooh, same shape, just making it fatter, All right? If you want to do some more crazy stuff over there, you can. But this is a little helmet, so we're not going all nuts. Okay, so here's the middle. I did start off center a little bit. You know, sometimes I like to do that. Maybe you want to put it straight in the center. I did make this one a little fatter than I imagined, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. Which side? It's the same, huh? Maybe I can get the camera a little closer. Let's try to. Mm. 
Maybe being a little closer will help. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Maybe I can, maybe I can speed that a little bit. I don't know. No, that's not doing nothing. Okay, I think we're, is that better? Hopefully that's better. That's what we got right there. Okay, so coming off the original horseshoe right there, I'm gonna kind of follow what we got going on here. Same thing. And you can see I'm not pulling on the tape very hard. I'm pulling just enough tension to keep it from falling down. naturally you have to pull a little bit more on the edges but really like that's not i i was really light on that that was not much of a pull i already know that that doesn't have much of a spring to it anymore so it's gonna stick especially if i'm pushing it down like this okay got that someone asks if you know how to marble Marbleize? Is that what we're doing on this? <laughs> we could. Um, yeah, you just use a uh, cellophane or. Yeah, you did help me do that. It's pretty easy. Um, you just use some cellophane or saran wrap or something. Spray it right on the saran wrap and just dab it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But if you're new, it's a good thing. It's a good technique. Probably not going to do it on this though. So I got that kind of laid out. Looks pretty good. Like I said, that's a little bigger than what I wanted, but it's all sticking good. Let's go ahead and run maybe a half of one right here. So maybe I can take, let's see. Cause I literally did not plan this out at all because I just figured we just do whatever. Okay, so maybe I'll bring one of those horseshoes in right here and like drop it down into that line. That's kind of where it'll end. So maybe only get maybe right here. So coming out of there, into that, up into there, and around. So that's the way I'm imagining this. I just got to make it happen with the tape. Somebody wants to know what's the best paint color mix for Flake, in your opinion? Best color mix? Oh, it's a lime line, the black. What's the best paint color mix for Flake? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, what's the best pink color mix for flake? Oh, what's my favorite candy color? My favorite, if that's what it is, hopefully that's what it is, because now I understand. I like uh, blue, oriental blue, and I like the root beer brown, especially when you add gold to it. Let's see how this looks. No, I'm not liking that. Go ahead and pull that. Someone wants to know what would be the best airbrush to start out with, um, Iwata wise. Oh shoot, I'm gonna show you that right here in a second because I just got a new one and it's on there. If you're on, if you're watching on Amazon, then it's actually linked up in there. It's the Iwata Neo. Uh, I think it's a 1.35 or no, no, I was wrong when I said that. Uh, zero. So 0 0.035 is what it is. Hopefully this looks okay. That looks, yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, so that Neo is probably the best starter airbrush. I still use it today. All right, we'll go with that. We'll do that. I 
And then I'm going to go ahead and trim these real quick because it's not necessary, but they're going to get in the way. I want to put one more little flame. See how I was doing that right there? Let me show you a trick to you just because this will help a lot of you. Instead of cutting it, instead of cutting it like this, I'm just putting it right there, putting pressure on it, and then pulling up on the tape. That way you're not going to cut into your flake base coat or whatever you have down there. Way better way. But, uh, okay, that looks all right. Maybe I was thinking like, because I know the visor goes right here, uh, which I actually have it. Go ahead and mock that up so we can see. Oh yeah, look how cool it is. Yeah, so maybe I want to do like one more half of one right there to cover that area. Yeah. I don't know. Is that necessary? Let me do the other side and I'll see. I'll look at it. What do you think, Ash? No? Yeah? yeah? Feathers? I could do that. I don't think I'm prepared to do that. <laughs> but I could do that. But yeah, if you guys have any recommendations that you want to uh, want me to do on the next helmet or on the next hood, because literally, I think this is going to be our next one right here next Thursday. This is going to be this. This look. This, this hood looks huge now compared to the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be painting this next. It's going to go flake and candy. Well, it already is flake, so we're going to go candy. But, uh, yeah, throw out some ideas on that. We can do and maybe a little mural there or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to this flame here. I want to do something similar to that side. I want it to be exact, but it's not going to be. Horseshoe. Somebody said, I love the products. I'm new to this tape line, but I keep getting shrinkage. How do I stop that around the curbs? That's exactly what's happening is it's just natural to want to pull on the tape, especially when you're going around those hard curves, just like this one right here. It's just, I mean, it's just human nature. I think just to pull on the tape hard to like, to get it to wrap around that and that's exactly what you're doing you're just pulling too hard on the tape let it rest find find the spot where it's you just need to pull it just hard enough to get it to, to where you need to line it up for it to go and that's it just let it let it follow that path sometimes you got to pull it back up and, and put it back down like this one's a little weird but then that's the nice thing about flames is they can be a little weird and still look really good like this is going to look excellent even if it was like even if it was pretty jagged people would be like what the hell that looks great so like, you get away with a lot you, you don't realize it till you're actually done painting it somebody asked if you've done fish scale in flames before in the flames nope i have not done that the problem with that would be on a regular helmet that'd be great but on this, by the time I did the fish scales, I feel like, and those are faded, you wouldn't even really tell they're fish scales. But if this was a full-size helmet, definitely, yeah. You'd have lines of that. That'd look great. Even putting them in the background would be awesome. Like, we could throw lace uh, in this background right there and do it in a candy paint. But I think we're going to stay on track. Let's try to stay on track here and just outline these in uh, black and candy we'll see how long we've been on maybe i'll leave that looks like we've been on for a minute so uh maybe we'll just do the candy fade maybe do the leaf on the next one but i'm gonna go ahead and trim these even though i don't have to because we don't we're not going to be taping uh, the other side or painting the other side i should say someone asked if you have ever had the fine line tape pull your base coat yeah that does happen sometimes Usually it's caused by poor prep work, or maybe you've built up the, if you're, if you're taping straight onto base coat 
and the base coat's really thick, then you're always risking the fact of pulling some paint. So I always try to work my jobs around to where I'm just taping on top of clear coat because a lot of my stuff is cleared multiple times. Then, uh, then you never really have to worry about it. But yeah, if you're pulling it off a clear coat, you know that you didn't prep it good enough. All right, that's looking good. That side a little better than the other. Okay, so there's two ways. There's a couple of different ways I can approach this. Like I can paint this. Obviously, I can choose different colors and it would look completely different, different candy colors. Um, or I can mask, you know, I can mask off the inside and then trim those to be all nice and even. And then I could use just the outer edge, which that's not what we're doing. Or we could use the tape actually as a pinstripe. And if we did that, we actually wouldn't have to mask anything. So, like I said, traditionally how you would do this is you would run masking tape on all the negative right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. All this would be taped off. That would be taped off. That would be Just leaving whatever is on the inside of the tape exposed. And then you could do whatever. I mean, you could edge it out with an airbrush, blending it into the center, kind of making like a blended ghost effect. Like if you were to do, use a really light blue candy, you know, that would look that would look pretty ghosted by the time it got blended into the center here using candy paints and not to get into a big, a big thing about candy paints, but using candy paints, they're transparent. So when we spray them down, they, you can actually see the flake that's underneath it. So hopefully that makes sense. Candy is a dye pigment, regular pigmented paint. It will cover, um, but you can also blend it. You use them both in, in different areas. But uh, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. I'm gonna go ahead and frame this out right here because you can see we're not gonna wanna leave that, right? It's not gonna look good. Look at that, not good. Someone wants to know how long should you wait to pull the line up after painting candy? It depends on how saturated you sprayed it. And it depends on what you sp sprayed it. If you sprayed with an airbrush, it's virtually almost dry by the time it hits the hits the uh, part if you're spraying it light enough but if you're soaking it up in there and really really spitting it out you're gonna it's gonna take longer so that's once again it could take 10 seconds or it could take 10 minutes or if you really soaked it it could take an hour and if you if you're waiting that long you know you've done something wrong you really you want to apply the candy it's not like clear coat you don't want to to get it glossy and smooth you're just wanted wanting to get the pigment on there so if it looks dry that's fine you know it, the the clear will will bring it back to life and that's the optimal way i guess it's uh, but there we go frame that out could even go in there and frame all this out too but we're not going to get all gnarly like that so like i like i get back to so i could tape all this out but i think what i'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to square these off right here. That way I don't have to, I'm going to show you a way that there's not going to be any masking involved in this. Leave that. Okay, I just cut those at a straight and it seems like being the 16th inch, you can kind of get away with that because it looks good. Eighth inch tape, I would probably cut it both ways like that to make it a point. But you do it however you want to do it. It's going to look either good however you do it. Just try to keep, keep the line straight, keep them stuck so you don't get any underspray or overspray. Okay, that looks great. So let's do this so we don't have to do any masking because that's going to be easier. I'll go ahead and we'll get some paint mixed up. We're going to need lots of suggestions. Okay, let's hear it. But maybe I'll change it. Um, 
hate and then fade the fade the black and the the rest your color choice is going to use the big line um okay i like that idea someone says they like the lace idea someone said do oriental blue with cobalt blue with gold leaf Well, let's edge it in black right now because we know we got to do that and I'm not going to master that. All right, so we got black base coat. We got, not that, let's see. Let's make this look good for the camera. Got some black, black base coat. That don't look that great, but. These little cups, popsicle sticks, they work great. And we're going to be using some urethane reducer. So how I mix this up is roughly it's going to be a one to one mixture. And if you're since we're going to be spraying out of an airbrush, we're probably going to reduce it even more than one to one. So here, this is straight out of the the bottle. It's way too thick, way too thick to spray out of an airbrush, even out of a spray gun. So we got to reduce it. And what we reduce pretty much all of our paints with is urethane reducer. We reduce primers with this, base coats mostly. Um, you reduce the clear base coat for the candy. This is like an all around something you got to have. It doesn't need to be any certain brand. You need urethane reducer. If it's automotive grade, you're probably good. You do have different, you have fast, normal, fast, normal, and slow. So however your temperature, however you feel, we got to use, but this is just the standard. So that's about one-to-one. -one. As you can see, there's no really hard rules. It's like, it's not, you mix it to how you need it. It's just reducing it. You're not, it's not a party part A and part B kind of a thing to where it needs to catalyze or anything like that. Basically, we're just making it thin enough that it's gonna spray nice and smooth on here instead of all splotchy and not not, not working like it should. So we reduce it. And that looks like that's good. That's reduced really good. Let's get this out of the way. Got and somebody mentioned earlier airbrush. This is an Iwata Neo. I'll throw some of the black base coat in there. Okay, we'll spray it on something. Then we got a piece of paper over there. Oh. So I'm going to spray this on some paper just, just so, so you guys can see, have some contrast. You see that spraying out pretty smooth. You know, see that? It's like if it was too thick, it would be all splotchy. Um, it's definitely thin enough. It might be even on the thinner side, but that's great. You see those nice blends on there? If it's coming out and it's splotchy, um, reduce it some more. So it looks like I got this on the first one. Someone asked if it's too thick, will it clog the airbrush up more often? Yes, yeah. that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to clog the airbrush. It's not going to have a nice blend. It's not, you know, you thin it out so it runs through the airbrush better. Makes sense. Like, right? It's thinner. It's going to flow better. Uh, probably like 16. Like once again, it doesn't, if you, um, say it was too thick, if your paint was too thick, you can up your air pressure and it'll make it flow better. So you kind of have to, yeah, I think it's, it's the, I, it's the max of what the Iwata studio puts out. So I think it's like 18 or 20 or something like that. All right, so black in the airbrush. I'm gonna aim straight for the tape lines. But first, 
I'm gonna make sure that all these corners are pressed down before I start. Okay, we look good. See, I'm aiming just for the tape lines. Got that part, keep moving along. Oh, it's his dream job? What? Why just in your dreams? You can do it. Oh, yeah, right on. You, you'll always remember your first one. Because it's usually not that good, but it, you get better. Every Everything you do, every job you do, you get a little better. Even if something goes wrong, like you have a problem with paint pills, you're just gonna learn. You can take that as a learning experience. You're gonna learn how to fix that problem, which is, that's what a lot of custom paint is about, is how to fix your problems. Because we're breaking so many different rules. Like really, this paint, a lot of this paint's not meant to be doing all this stuff to it, you know, like putting all the layers on there and uh, so we're, we're breaking a lot of the manufacturer rules, like, you know, mill thickness and laying down tape and not catalyzing stuff. Uh, so that's why we have the problems, you know, here and there, because there's a lot of steps to custom painting. You miss one or two, you'll end up paying the price. Hopefully that don't happen here, but usually I don't have very many errors. Like I'm kind of know like you learn from it someone wants to know what mini that, that we're painting next what we're going to paint on it i don't know what, um, okay. oh which one mm -hmm. this one right here yeah. this one mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna do um not the same thing we did last week yeah. something different yeah, throw out some ideas. Let's see. Let's, well, maybe some marbleized. Maybe we heard marbleized. We heard lace. We heard. Oh, everybody said that. I gotta buy the stuff to do that. It's the yeah. We actually have done. We did that recently. Maybe we maybe we should do that next week. Okay, it looks like I got that. Let's go ahead and you know, I'm going to send just a little bit more of a fade on this outside on the negative because I'm going to run some candy paint on this and I don't really want the overspray. I want extra room here. I don't want to mask this thing off. It's too small. I just want to keep the tape that I have on there and work with it because it's going to look great. And you're going to see it's not even that much work. You just got to lay the tape down, follow the tape lines. With the paint, not hard. The design's already done. 
And then we're gonna mix up some candy paint right here in a second. We're gonna accent this a little bit with maybe some blue. I like blue. Or purple. We can do purple. Okay, so here we are. We basically just, uh, we just hit the hit the tape lines, the black, faded it in, pretty easy. Let's mix up some candy paint. Some suggestions they said, someone said 3D, and then someone said, be really cool if you did an off traditional Smokey and the Bandit bird on the hood with gold and root beer brown. Oh, I like that idea. Someone said never ending line on the hood somewhere. They want to see your take on it. They said they love the mini concept. Somebody said real fire. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love, love the real fire, fire again. again. And then someone just asked, how do you switch to a different color quick when using one brush? Um, I put my lacquer thinner in a spray bottle and I just spray it right through and just spray it into a rack. Do I need to make that sound effect again? Because that's what happens. Someone like the chuckle up and said, rub it too. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. I do. Whose cat got going on? <laughs> we don't. We're gonna try to put it on a cat. Yeah. I want to put it on the neighbor's cat, but that is a uh, one vicious cat. Yeah, that cat but Brewski, we gotta try it on the Okay, well maybe. So okay, I just I put some lime line, the clear base coat, in this cup, and I reduced it. Looks like it might need to be reduced a little bit more. Once once again, about a one to one. And I mixed a lot. That's uh, that's way more than I need for this little baby helmet. Let me. Let's just do a little bit. So, because we still need to put the candy in there. Someone asked how much time allowed before removing the tape. Uh, you're gonna want to remove it after the paint's dry, which is depends on how heavy you spray it, which is probably between like. Uh, five minutes, I would say, maybe to be on the safe side, but don't leave it on there for like more than a few days. Or gonna want to pull it off before then. So what do I got here? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Uh, house color, oriental blue. It's a brighter blue. I like that. So once again, this is a dye. It's translucent. It's clear. Well, not clear. It's translucent. So, uh, basically, looks like, uh, what's somebody say? A Jolly Rancher. Somebody told me a Jolly Rancher somewhere. And it really stuck with me. Let's see how it's, you can, and you can see through it, which that's great if you have metal flake underneath. Because then you can still see the flake, right? And then, yeah, I can, I can go deep into it, and I'm not going to right now because I'm ready to load up my airbrush here. We're gonna take the black. Oh, look at that, we're out of the black anyways. So yeah, somebody asked, just a spray bottle into a rag. Somebody's asking um, something about the gold leaf. If you've ever use clear coat as the glue for the gold leaf and if so how well did it work versus the sizing glue never tried it and i would not they probably wouldn't do that that's 100 percent definitely not going to work if it does let me know because <laughs> i don't think so i don't want to sound like a hard ass but uh that's not really what clear coats it's not meant for that use the sizing glue It would be nice if it did work though. That'd be convenient. All right, so I had to thin that out just a little bit more because I could tell in my cup when I was mixing it, it seemed a little thick. 
Somebody asks if you like the Createx paints in their candy. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do like the Createx. They just take too long to, not too long. I just don't like how long they take to dry. But the candies actually really do work. They work really good. And it's water-based, so if you're spraying from your home, maybe you do want to use Cretex. It's just going to, just remember that it's water-based, it's going to, it's not going to evaporate as fast, take much longer for it to dry, you just got to be careful, you know, where to touch it. But I've used it before, and I am actually really surprised on how well the candies work. Just as good, I would say, but just, I don't know, speed's a thing, man, speed's a thing, I like it, and this stuff works flows better a little bit better than Createx. so i'm just going to hit the inside of this flame with the candy blue trying to stay away from the negative because i want to keep that the, just the uh, black into the silver fade somebody says they've had issues pulling up candy mixed with 40 50 clear yeah you you may have so if you're taping on top of your candies, like I said, you're always risking pulling it off. That's just the way it is. So if there's any way that you can uh, design it out or layer your paint or do something to where you don't have to tape on your existing paint, sometimes you just have to. That's just the way it goes. Um, yeah, you just, just try not to have it so thick. You know, the thicker the paint is, because I'm spraying with an airbrush right here. This is going on way thin. Like, I mean, check this out. I mean, it's going on so thin right there. And it's having time to dry in between those coats. If I was to like saturate it like that, like all at once, it it's gonna take a minute for that to dry. Like that's super wet right now. This right here that I've already painted, even right there, I sprayed it so light that a lot of the uh reducer has evaporated before it even hits the surface because it's going on nice and even and thin with an airbrush um same thing if you have a paint gun if you're spraying this with a paint gun you could just mask off this outer area right here and uh, but you would be better off especially with these tight lines is to do nice light coats even with the gun um that way you're not just like flooding it all out and that's gonna if you plan on taping to it later there's a chance it could pull the paint and it happens. And if you, I mean, I pulled paint uh, a lot, you know, recently. It just happens sometimes. You just have to deal with it as it comes, know how to fix it. This is Oriental Blue. It's nice. I like it. I put it into clear base coat. Okay, because so the. Before I finish this, I probably should have went a little more detail. This is a candy concentrate. It's like the Kool-Aid packets you buy and you put them with a whole bunch of water to dilute them out because you can't just like straight up eat, drink Kool-Aid right out of the pack with just, you know, you got to dilute it. This is so you, you, when you dilute it, you do dilute it with either a inner coat clear or a clear base coat or a binder, um, whatever, you know, a house of color has their own brand. You, you have to mix it with something clear, uh, preferably not clear coat, although clear coat would probably work. In this application, it wouldn't because you don't want to touch it. I mean, if you're spraying the whole thing, maybe clear coat could work. You, can, you Like I said, you can break rules with custom painting. It's not that big of a deal, but sometimes you'll pay the price for that. So I'll mix this about a four parts of the clear base to one part of this blue because I didn't want it too intense. But once again, that's not a hard rule. You can kind of play with the mixture on how um, thick and how much of this you want to put in your clear base. One thing is when you thin it out, it does need to be a certain thinness to be not too thick to spray out of here. That has nothing to do with this mixture with the clear base. You know, that's that's just mixing that with a clear base and then you're thinning it out after that to make it sprayable. You would thin it out less if you're spraying it out of a gun. You'd thin it out more because you're spraying it out of a little airbrush. So hopefully that helps. Okay, go for it. Someone asked if there's an uh, item list that includes equipment required for a motorcycle job. 
like doing a paint job? Mm. Well, you know, I mean, it kind of depends. Like you're going to need, you're going to, you're going to need some pads to scuff it down. You're going to need some cleaner. You're going to need some rags. I mean, you can get into a lot of the stuff that you need, but, um, if you're starting a job, maybe start by just uh, prepping it first and getting all the, if you're new, prepping it first, getting all the prep work done, finding, maybe watching a couple of videos on how to prep stuff, get those items, maybe get some primer if you need it, um, and then kind of go from there. So you can kind of, kind of break it down in chunks if you're doing your first one, get it, get it to a certain like primer and then sand it and then you're ready for base coat. Learn about base coat, you know, practice your tape lines on something else before you you know you do your job first one's always hard because you got to gather up all the stuff but just start gathering up the stuff you need you can't maybe you, maybe you don't have the money or you don't know exactly what you need to get at first just get some of it at least like uh, get some tape so at least you can practice the tape so because if you can't lay down the lines uh you really can't you know you're really not going to get any results so practice that first maybe Okay, then someone asked, do you ever thing. use wax grease remover on base coat? Nah. Well, I do if I feel like I may have got it greasy somehow. Like if somehow I feel like it may have got contaminated, then I would go ahead and, yeah, I would use wax grease remover. But I know. I know where this helmet has been. <laughs> and then someone said, do you candy over non-flaked paint? Yeah, for sure you can. Yeah, over metallic works good. I mean, candy is really meant for like some something with a shine or a bling to it. Pearls, you can do over pearls. You can do them over white base coat too. It's just going to have more of a flat effect. Not a flat. It's going to have more of like a pigment look, I guess. Not the same as what you would uh, you get with these, these uh, metal flakes and stuff that are underneath. And then someone asked... So would you advise after doing the candy spray out to put a clear coat over it so if you're taping again, it doesn't peel? Yes. Yep. yep. That's how I do it. And sometimes it takes more work because you got to clear it and you got to sand it again. But I feel like it's worth it because you, it's, if you have errors, which happens a lot with custom paint, you're able to repair them easier because you have that barrier. It's kind of like if anybody has used like Photoshop, and I always compare this to Photoshop because that's kind of what I know. Um, the layers that you can build, like you do maybe one picture and you can layer another picture over the top. It's just like being able to go back to a certain layer and have some kind of a barrier there. It really helps out. And then also like with, with that, with leafing, like you don't really want to lay your leaf on top of base coat if you can't help it. It's going to be better. Like even laying leafing on this little bit of a textured surface was going to show. You'd rather have it completely smooth. Yeah, I like both of those. Crushed glass is nice because it's less silver and it's more white. Definitely it blings more than anything else. It's a little bit more to work with. You got to have a 1.7 or bigger gun. And you're also going to have to lay out a little bit more clear coat on top of that to get those flakes to bury in. Oh, this is looking good. This is my last tape right here. Let's make this one. We'll put this one in the commercial. Oh, what is all this? Told you something was going to go wrong. Let me lay that. So I must have got something on there. I must have. Oh, you know what? When I was cleaning my airbrush, I splashed it. That's what happened.
Someone asked, why does my lace paint job attempts end up looking like snake skin? The leaf paint jobs look like snake skin? Lace. Why do they? It's probably your type of lace that you have. I don't know. But um, if you're doing it in like a really small, I kind of like the look of that though. Like a lot of, I feel like um, lace can be mistaken as snake skin a lot, in a lot of times. It still looks good. Then someone said, leaf last over clear. Will least last? Yeah, we least last over clear coat, over sand and clear coat. I do. It's not the last thing I do, but to be honest with you, I like to clear. If I put down leaf, I like to put it on top of clear coat that's sanded, and I like to clear it twice. And when I say twice, I mean clear with three coats of clear, sanded, and cleared again then polished and sanded but that's a whole nother thing it's like what kind of quality you want to bring i feel like it's not that hard to clear coat everything you got done that day come in the next morning sand it and you're ready to go again so if you kind of plan you have two jobs going at once you can definitely easy enough do multiple clear coat sessions because like i said saving it and having a, that barrier can really save your ass sometimes Yeah, this is looking good. So I could have put like a lace in there. I still could if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. We're going to pull this last. There's the last line right there. Oh, yeah. So there it is. That wasn't too bad. That was really easy, actually, because there was virtually no masking besides this little masking i did earlier and just by following those lines and staying tight with my blue to make sure i didn't get any overspray like if you're new and you're way back here you're, you're going to get overspray of blue and if you don't want that i mean you could still do the blue there like you still could have a fade there or you could do a gold right here you could do a gold over all of this like straight up you could put this in the booth put gold candy in your gun spray this thing with gold it's going to turn the blue to green and it's going to turn everything that's silver gold and it's the black's going to stay black so oh <laughs> hey good looking out man let's be giving him super chats <laughs> it's the money shot okay there we go there it is. All right, so I'm gonna take a couple more questions if they come in, but I'm gonna we'll see what this visor looks like and that's gonna be it. With the visor though, I mean, come on. Just look at this thing. Like imagine if you painted this and gave it to your buddy like for his birthday. Okay, bro. Here, check this out. It's for your birthday or something. I don't know. They'd be certain people if they got this. Even if it wasn't painted, they're cool. Like, uh, here's my, here's one I painted uh, a couple weeks ago or something. But you can see the difference. But you can do all kinds of styles on these. You know, I really like this one. It looks clean. It looks better than I thought. I thought that flame was gonna be too fat. And maybe I could have centered it. I don't know. That's the thing. Is you always always look at your work you know maybe i would have put a baby one right there or i don't know there's a lot of stuff you you can do different that's why i always look at my work critique it what can i do better next time or what can i do different there's so many things you could still do to this thing like i said with the gold changing that green with the gold having everything else gold totally different helmet not that much more work either just i'm seriously spraying it in, out of a gun and yeah completely different look once the once the clear hits this, it's going to brighten all this up. All that's going to turn back to what we have here. You know, it's uh, this is all scuffed down so we can get adhesion. Because as you know, we don't we don't tape and paint on top of glossy finishes because it just doesn't work with automotive paint. Got to it's got to stick to something, some kind of a scratch or some some kind of chemical adhesion if you're going to do it any other way. But okay, is that it? 
Okay, let's let's get those questions. We be so someone, here. someone just um, asking. They said, "How do you get those turns in your taping curves? Every time I take make my curves, they ripple. Is your tape like a masking tape? The kind I use is vinyl material." Yeah, so you're you're you can use masking tape. Masking the the, the masking material, the paper tape, crepe tape. It's not going to turn quite as hard and as good as what vinyl or PVC tape is. You're pulling too hard. That's the common. Every I know this because everybody has the same problem when they first start. Is you're pulling too hard on the edges, or you're pulling your tape up to fix stuff too many times. You can only do that so many times, and then you really lose the adhesion of that tape. It's better just to start over. But yeah, practice the 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 attention of your tape. You know, feel the tension. Don't stretch it just hard enough, and you'll get the hang of it. You know, and really having the backhand like if you're if you're like you know all start where you're comfortable i guess you know, that's the easiest way you know don't try to do a straight line this way do a straight line this way you know so that way you have an eyeball so my body's right here i don't know if you can tell my body's right here so uh yeah if you're gonna do a straight line you want to have your eyeballs looking this way you're gonna try to do a straight line that's this way and you're gonna do it like that you're i mean it's just hard it's just hard so get your body in the right spot so your eyeballs are looking at it the right way. Somebody said, how would you get rid of the overspray on the silver on the right side of the helmet where the face visor goes? There's overspray. You could wipe it. You can literally wipe it off with lacquer thinner. I'm not sure what he's talking about, but um, you can wipe it off with lacquer thinner and then repair it because this has been clear coated or you can sand it. And then someone said, where's the helmet on the site? The It's on the big cartel. And then you'll find a link to this video on the Amazon, on my Amazon affiliate link, which it's, it's linked. The, the link that's down in the description, wherever you're watching this, um, it's going to have that, that link to where this is at. This video just needs to end before it posts. But yeah, look how cool the helmet is. I mean, it's. Anyways, that it? Okay. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, so yeah, hit me up in the DMs on Instagram. How you want me to paint that hood? But so far, how are we painting it? We decided marbleized and mutant. mutant crystals. Okay, if I can get that stuff. If I can get the stuff to do it, I'll do it. But uh, yeah, thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate it. See you next Thursday. Later.